Hello everyone, welcome to my review of Dodonpachi Resurrection or Dodonpachi Dai Fukatsu, that's the Japanese title, for the Nintendo Switch and by extension for the Xbox 360 and Steam because this version is a one-to-one -one copy of the 360 and Steam version of the game. So I will say to begin with, if you already have the Xbox 360 version or you already have the Steam version and you're happy playing it on those platforms, there really isn't a reason to pick up this release on the Nintendo Switch as it is exactly the same as those. However, if you are part of the demographic that wants to play on the Nintendo Switch, you only have a Nintendo Switch or you don't really like to play on PC or it's been way too long since you dusted off your 360, then this release is definitely for you and Livewire have come through as they have previously on their Mushihimi-sama and Escaluda 2 ports. So they're starting to earn my trust a little bit as far as delivering quality products because they've had three in a row and all three of them have been pretty solid. A few things that we need to discuss, but overall a very solid release. But before we get into the technicals, into the nitty gritty of the Switch version, let's talk about Dodonpachi Resurrection as a whole because funnily enough, as much as I've discussed this game on this channel, as often as it has appeared in Shmup Slam events and has appeared on the podcast and I just seem to reference it all the time, I have not actually formally reviewed Resurrection at any point, which is a pretty interesting oversight, but I've been sort of waiting for an opportunity and this is the opportunity. So let's begin with an overview of Donanpachi Daifukatsu. So it is the fifth installment or fourth, if you don't want to count B-Storm, in the Donanpachi series, which goes with Don Pachi, and then Dodon Pachi, and then B Storm, again, if you want to count that, and then Diajo, and then after that, we have Resurrection, and then following Resurrection is SDOJ, and that's the entire series. And what's funny is Dodon Pachi Resurrection is not only a cool title, but it's also a great description because it is sort of a reimagining of the Dodon Pachi series and a dividing point between the earlier games in the series and the later games in the series. I always think of it that way. There's always this sort of clear line in my head between the two because as much as they share in common with one another, like they have chaining, like they have hypers and bees, really the feel and the emphasis of the gameplay and even the bullet patterns start to really diverge off where Dodonpachi has much more of a classic bullet hell manic shooter style and then Resurrection almost feels more like Futari at times or Mushimisama. It almost feels like it has more in common with those, especially the emphasis on cancels and bullet canceling and using your hyper for those. Whereas earlier in the series, your hyper did not bullet cancel and the scoring wasn't really all about that and instead much more focused on chaining. So it is a pretty big overhaul. And I do know that some people don't really like Resurrection as much as the earlier entries in the series myself included. That being said, I have really grown to appreciate Resurrection over the years, and I do think it is one of the most popular shmups being played right now. I actually did a poll on my channel quite a while back, it got about 150 responses, was looking for more, but of those 150 responses, it was very clear that the most popularly played shmup right now is Dodonpachi Resurrection. This is also reflected in just the general activity around the game where you'll see tons of high score updates. You'll see tons of submissions into events on the game. I think it's been in every single Shmup Slam. I think in Shmup Slam 5, there were three or two entries of the game, which is pretty unusual. So this thing has a lot going on for it. And this port definitely reflects that because unlike some of the previous reviews I've done on this channel recently, like the Tiger Heli compilation, where it felt like it was a little bit thin on the content for the price tag, Resurrection, this cannot be debated. This is probably, if not the most content rich shmup release I have ever seen. It's got a lot going on for it. So, of course, you got the arcade 1.5 version, then you got the 1.51 update, and then you have the arrange B, you have arrange A, you have novice mode, you have black label, you have black label arrange. There is a crap load to choose from and play. And I'll give a quick little overview of all the different arranges and everything like that. But before that, I'll give a quick summary of the feel of Donanpachi Resurrection. So, for those who do not know, this is definitely a bullet hell. A bullet hell to the gills. 
but it has some mechanics and things introduced into it to definitely help you along the way and I feel like when it comes to the cave library this was again another attempt by cave to make a shmup that is very accessible to new players of the genre so if you've been wanting to get into bullet hell been wanting to get into shmups Dodonpachi Resurrection is one of the best titles to get into it though I do think it has one small flaw when it comes to new players that I do wish was addressed in the game somewhere and so I'll help you now which is when you're playing Dodonpachi Resurrection and you see these giant purple lasers coming at you you just need to hold your laser to block them Dragon Ball Z style to like beam struggle with them that's how you cancel them I remember when I first picked up the game I was like yeah I got this I got this and I kept getting killed by those purple lasers I didn't know what was going on that's how you get rid of them you hold down your beam to cancel them there's just a quick tip that will definitely save you a lot of headache but when it comes to being a new player to the genre Don Pachi Resurrection has a feature that's a little bit contentious with people but I think it was the right choice which it has a very generous auto bomb so in the previous entries in the Don Pachi series DOJ and DDP there is no auto bomb you've got to reflex bomb if you want to use your bombs to save yourself in this game they allow you to use an auto bomb and the way it works is if you get clipped you'll just automatically drop a bomb you won't take a death you won't take damage but the bomb you drop is a little tiny one so it doesn't do a whole lot of damage to enemies barely hurts the bosses and also ruins your scoring but we won't worry too much about that and if you're wanting to manual bomb that's how you do more damage and so there is a reason to still manual bomb and reflex bomb because you will get a bigger screen clear and you will do more damage on the bosses and I think that's a nice little tip that new players might also struggle with because if they don't know that there is a difference between bombing which I didn't at first when I was first getting into the genre felt like damn you know this is this is kind of brutal when it comes to the boss fight but on top of the bomb mechanic another huge change from the Dodonpachi series is the hyper mechanic now the hyper mechanic is very different in two distinct ways in the previous entry in the Dodonpachi series DOJ your hyper was linked to your bomb button and this may not seem like a big deal but it actually pretty heavily influences how you play the game for example let's say you're fighting a boss and you're trying just to survive and you hyper it well in DOJ not only will you do more damage but the boss will be more aggravated and the patterns will get more aggressive and it kind of gets scary so the kind of classic thing that you do is you activate the hyper and then you bomb through it to cancel the hyper and to do damage in this game you don't have to do that little dance because the hyper and the bomb button are distinct from one another so if you want to hyper without bombing you're able to do that or if you want to bomb without hypering you're able to do that which pretty heavily influences the way you play the game as far as collecting your hypers rank management meter management all that sort of stuff a simple change but a very important one and then an even more important change when it comes to the hyper mechanic in this game is that it cancels bullets the previous hypers in Dodon Pachi series did not this game it does which is mostly what the scoring centers around if I'm to understand that so when you activate your hyper you'll get a green sort of beam and if you're shooting it you'll notice it's slowing down the bullets and then they're sort of just dissipating it's canceling the bullets and the way it works is the more that you use your hyper mechanic the more it raises the rank the less effective this bullet canceling becomes until they just eat their way through your bullet cancels and hate you if you really jack up your rank so my advice if you're playing for survival is try to keep your hypers to a minimum because that's going to really increase the rank it's going to really increase the dynamic difficulty of the game and it's going to make it a real struggle though if you're going for score that's the name of the game so it's a very cool scoring survival trade-off mechanic Another thing about it is when you're in beam mode of your hyper, you don't seem to bullet cancel or you don't bullet cancel as effectively. And what's funny is that even though I've played this game for a very long time, I've always felt like there's some funkiness to the bullet canceling, whether you're in beam mode or in shot mode, where sometimes it feels like it kind of works and sometimes it feels like it doesn't work. I don't know if it's just the invulnerability window is massive or what it is. But generally speaking, at least when I play, if I'm trying to cancel bullets, I do shot, and then if I'm trying to do damage and kill things, I'm using beam. So keep that in mind, uh, otherwise you may find yourself trying to cancel things with your beam and just getting hit in the face. And like I mentioned earlier, 
The another thing you have to really keep track of in this game is all the purple beams that are shot at you where you need to cancel them this becomes a big thing in boss fights and being able to switch back and forth between beam and shot is very important and what's also interesting about this game is that it feels a little bit more toho like when it comes to switching from beam and shot because in the previous entries in the series or most cave games there's this sort of really long wind up window to go from beam to shot you really notice it in Mushi Himisama actually because in Mushi the difference between rapid movement and concentrated movement is so massive that it feels like you're just hitting the brakes and you can really feel that slide but in DFK in Resurrection this window is heavily cut down where you can not instantly probably but very quickly switch from beam and shot so keep that in mind as well because in a lot of patterns you're going to need to be able to do this to get around them especially since when it comes to the previous entries in the series it feels like the ship movement in Donanpachi Resurrection as a whole is just generally slower. Now there are certain different arrangements that you can do that speed it up like playing power mode or whatever and we'll talk about those in a second. But for the most part, especially if you're playing strong style, which is one of the best styles of the game, your ship movement is more sluggish than the previous entries in the series. And again, I think this is because the way the bullet patterns work, there's a more sort of Toho Mushi Misama denseness to the bullet patterns that aren't as prevalent as previous entries into the series. At least that's what I noticed, so keep that in mind as well. And now let's talk about the different ship types, because when you first fire up the game, I'm sure this is going to be kind of confusing. So the first type is bomb type. This is where you have a crap load of bombs, but you don't seem to do as much damage when it comes to your shot and to your beam. And so for the most part, this is a great style for if you're a beginner, you just want to bomb a lot of shit. Also, your movement is kind of faster in bomb mode. So from time to time, I kind of enjoy playing the bomb style. But in version 1.5 especially, the bomb style doesn't seem all that compelling as compared to the strong style. So the strong style is the bottom one. And this is just, you lose a little bit of movement speed, but you gain a lot of firepower. And it doesn't seem to affect too many negatives maybe your rank builds up higher or something but again I'm not as much of an expert on this game as the previous entries in the series but if you're going for a one all or a clear I definitely recommend probably type B strong the chopper this is just a beast of a ship and it probably is the most popular ship type of resurrection at least that I've noticed it seems to be used a lot which is kind of funny because the helicopter in the original Donanpachi is kind of a piece of crap and so it's funny to see it so beefed up in this version of the game. Whereas Type C was a real contender in the original Donanpachi. In this game, Type C doesn't seem that great to me. At least when I played, it doesn't feel good. It's sluggishly slow and it has this weird spread that's really unusual where you don't get that nice wide boomerang shape that you have in the original Donanpachi. Instead, it's like extremely wide and out but has these weird gaps and kind of critical areas so it, it is kind of an odd ship type i'm sure it can do a lot of damage and it's good and all that but i don't like it nearly as much as the reno dodonpachi version and instead i much prefer to play type b though type a is also a lot of fun as well so those are my two favorite ship types type a and type b and so in between bomb and strong you have the middle ship type which is the oddest which is the power style and the way this works is kind of complicated but you are able to switch your ship mode so it kind of goes into like this weird Gundam Robotech thing between boost and normal mode normal mode you have much faster movement speed and you don't seem to do as much damage and then boost mode you slow down it kind of feels like you're playing strong style but you don't have any bomb really and so instead you're mu using your hypers much more often you seem to gain hypers much more frequently it's all about the hypers and so the way power mode works is initially when you play it, you're like hell yeah this is this is awesome but as you get further and further game especially the final stages and final bosses and you don't really have bombs to recover with you don't have the auto bomb to help you all that much it actually is a very difficult shot type i've actually never cleared or got a one all with power style though i'll probably have to try and do that in the future you just need to know the stages much more you need to know the boss fights much more it's a very cool idea but as far as practicality for survival runs and stuff it's it's pretty brutal so that's 1.5 
then there's 1.51 which has some slight variations you can look up and then there's the ranges and the ranges are very interesting so there's a range A and a range B so a range A is the much more popular range and it's very cool where you basically fly the type A ship from Dodonpachi Daijo and it's kind of like a hybrid between the power style and a more regular style where you're able to gain an auto bomb but you can't manually bomb or anything like that you're just able to gain the auto bombs and you're able to sweet switch between the normal and boost mode but the ship is just way better than the OG type 1 ship it's just way cooler and also the hypers follow you around in that cute little tail like in DOJ this is a really cool mode and I definitely recommend checking out some high scoring replays of it especially Daring Spino's channel check his channel out he had the world record at one point I don't know if he got it back or if someone beat him I don't check up on that but he has some amazing replays in this mode it is very cool and probably one of my favorite arranges so then you have arrange B which is the most confusing arrange in the entire game and even looking up the Wikipedia entry and reading it I was still kind of scratching my head on the way this worked but apparently you do individual runs instead of doing an entire run so you play individual stages for score attack and you can change the parameters of your ship and there's a lot of rank management and I'm sorry you're gonna have to look up exactly how this mode works because it's a mouthful to go over and I was kind of scratching my head while reading through the post though I will say it is pretty difficult survival wise and it is a lot of fun and does seem to have a lot of scoring potential and is definitely underexplored so if you want to really dig into something that not a lot of people are looking at range B is worth your time and then we have black label now black label is super cool and so there's always some confusion on my part about whether Black Label is an arrange or whether it is a legit different version of the game like DOJ Black Label. And though I will say maybe Cave gives you a little bit of a hint here because there's Black Label mode and then there's Black Label arrange. So that's like either a new mode with an arrange or an arrange of an arrange. Now that's getting pretty deep in there. But anyway, Black Label is really cool, and I think if you're a little bit more experienced with Bullet Hells, you're wanting a little bit more oomph, Black Label is what you're looking for. It can get absolutely brutal, especially if you select the strong type. So let me warn you now, if you want to play for survival, you want to play it on a normal-ish difficulty, play the bomb style. If you want to go for the expert mode difficulty, play the strong style because like SDOJ after it, if you pick strong style, it doesn't just give you the strong ship. It also increases the difficulty of the game into expert mode essentially. So if you're just picking strong style because you're used to it and you're wondering why Black Label is absolutely destroying you, that is why. However, if you play the bomb style, it's not really that much different than 1.5. It's still a little bit harder. I came this close to getting a clear last night on stream and I have cleared it before but it's a much tighter run than 1.5 but it isn't massively more difficult and the way Black Label works is that it's even more about the cancels than even the original version of Dodonpachi Resurrection where if you shoot certain ship types you cancel their bullets if you kill them with laser and then you have this hyper and then if you turn the auto bomb system off you can use your bombs as hypers and you can jack up the rank super high and the scoring potential is much higher it's just it's a much crazier more cancel centric version of the game so if you're a big fan of Atari Black Label will definitely be up your alley I'm not as familiar with it as the original arcade version though it is really cool and the arranged soundtrack for Black Label absolutely is awesome and sounds really cool and then to end let's talk about my favorite arrange on this release and maybe one of my favorite arranges of all time which is Black Label Arrange aka Ketsu Pachi. Yes the tiger from Ketsui makes its return and it is a lot of fun though not an easy clear. I've come this close to clearing the mode but I've never quite been able to do it. I'll probably try over the next few weeks just for fun for the stream maybe try and get a clear of this mode but it is a lot of fun and basically the way it works is you don't have your auto bombs anymore unfortunately so now you got to play like it's actually Ketsui though you do have hypers now and so what's funny is I always feel like this is a bit of a predecessor towards K 
Ketsui Destiny Arrange, which came out from M2 not so long ago. I feel like this was kind of the progenerator of that idea. And if you play those arranges back to back, they, they do seem to have um, some similarities with one another. But anyway, this arrange is really fun to get into. And though it doesn't necessarily feel all that much like Ketsui because the bullet patterns and everything definitely feel much more on the resurrection side of things, it is just really cool to play as Tiger again. And it is a much more powerful ship than the other ships in the game. Just generally speaking, the lock-on is absolutely massive. It deals tons of damage. Your screen coverage is huge. And also the Tiger moves faster than like be strong and stuff like that. So the ship is just super OP. For that reason alone, it's actually really fun to play. Overall, I cannot recommend this enough. It gets the seal of approval. Now let's talk about the technical side of things because this is something that it's always a little bit scary when it comes to new shmup releases, especially on Nintendo Switch. So when it comes to slowdown accuracy, for the most part, from my gameplay, I felt like the slowdown accuracy was pretty faithful to the Xbox 360 version and Steam version. And in fact, there were a few times where it felt like a little bit more accurate to the 360 version than the Steam version, where it felt like there were a few patterns that didn't have as much slowdown on Steam as they were supposed to, but they did in this version at least in 1.5. And so the slowdown accuracy for the most part seems on point. However, there have been reports that there are some bugs with this release, at least initially. It looks like these have been brought to Livewire's attention and they are looking into it. And so I do have faith that these bugs will probably be addressed. And what I wanna say is that when it comes to like day one patches and bugs when it comes to releases for shmups, I kind of have a general framework that I go off, which is I will definitely criticize them if they don't seem like they can be fixed anytime soon or they feel like something that would take a massive amount of effort to fix. For example, again, once again, we've got to reference this port because it's just so referenceable. The Cotton 2 release where it has 11 frames of input lag. Now, some people have commented on that video like, Yo, they're just gonna patch it. I don't know why you're being so critical of this release when they'll just patch it. In that case, I have never seen a game patch out like eight frames of input lag. That would be a pretty crazy overhaul. And it seems like they basically at this point would have to just redo the entire game to get that much input lag out. And also when it comes to input lag, I have rarely seen input lag patched out of games. It has happened, but it's pretty rare for it to happen and so that's one thing where if it's on day one really laggy I feel much more comfortable discussing that and being like hey this is a problem but other times when games come out and they have like a little bit of frame rate issues or a little choppiness or they have small bugs in them those generally get worked out not always but they generally do and in this case I do have faith that Livewire will address these bugs so the first one is that some people have mentioned that black label does seem to be missing some slowdown. Now for me it was very hard to tell because I was playing Black Label and I'm not as familiar with this version as 1.5 so it didn't feel like it was missing slowdown that obviously but I'm also not good enough at the game to get really high rank in the later stages so for all I know if you get into the later stages with high rank it just turns into a nightmare so on that point I've heard reports of this I haven't seen it myself but I'm not discounting the possibility the other report is this bug, it's a scoring bug where you're not getting as many hits on a certain enemy section, I'll show the video of here, what's going on, where you're supposed to be able to get a ton of hits, so it really ruins the scoring of the game of Black Label if you're going for those big scores. Though again, it seems like Livewire have been made aware of this, in my personal opinion, this seems like the thing that's totally easy to patch or patchable, right? They could go in there and be like, oh, okay, this is the problem and patch it. Whereas, again, removing A frames of input lag or something like that doesn't seem like as, as possible. So I feel pretty comfortable recommending this release. I do think these issues will probably get patched out. And if not, I don't think it completely busts the game, at least if you're not going for competitive black label scores, to the point where it's not a recommend, especially since there's so much content on offer here. And it does have all the features that a really good port needs like it has a training mode again brought over from the original version it has great screen configurations you can rotate the screen you can play in tate you can adjust it very precisely however you want the overscan to look all that sort of stuff 
Funnily enough though, they never added a scanline feature to this. I always thought that was kind of funny. The cave ports don't have scanline features. I don't know why. Maybe because they were originally released on the Xbox 360 and they assumed you were playing it on a real CRT with scanlines. For whatever reason, they never did end up adding the scanline feature. But overall, nothing to complain about. But of course, before we end this, we've got to answer the million dollar question. What is the input lag? And I'm happy to say I have good news here. So if you are playing on ideal Nintendo Switch conditions, and I talk about this in my video of um, the Nintendo Switch input lag paradox. If you're playing on absolutely ideal Nintendo Switch conditions, so you're playing on a CRT, you're playing with a very fast arcade stick, you are going to get three frames of input lag, extremely similar to the Xbox 360 port and Steam port. I feel like the Steam port, my measuring of it was three frames of lag and my measuring of the Xbox 360 port was three frames of lag. But I do think over the years, with NVIDIA updates and everything like that, I think you can get the Steam port down to like two and a half frames, it feels like, with all the updates of the NVIDIA graphic cards and stuff like that. But at the time, I got three frames. And on the Xbox 360, it's three frames. So just like Mushi Misama, Livewire were able to deliver a very responsive port. Though I will say, take this with a bit of a grain of salt because you need to have ideal settings for your Nintendo Switch in order to get those three frames. Other than that, you're probably going to end up with four frames if you're using a less than optimal arcade stick or a less than optimal monitor, but still very responsive, definitely very clean as far as the Nintendo Switch, cannot fault it. Getting it down to two frames would be one hell of a miracle, especially on the Switch. So overall, a port I can definitely stand behind and say, Livewire have delivered once again excellent jobs and you cannot go wrong. And again, if you're waffling on the price tag, just to remind you, the amount of content in this game is absolutely insane. So I don't think you can really debate the price tag. And so yes, I'd like to end this review by just uh, asking that you subscribe, get notified, tell all your friends, spread the news, and also check out the Shmup Reddit for the Electric Underground because there's more coming out on my Reddit that I think is going to be really cool. So keep an eye on that. Thanks so much. Adios, everyone. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100-100, Ukshay Wadker, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Anthony Iodice, Aaron Solis, Ben, Borgi22, Brian Reboot, Brian Shiver, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Daniel Savage, Darren Griffin, Delta Tango 6, Disco Stas Leia, DJ420, Praise It, Dubs, Entropy, Eric H, FCK, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Geriatric, Don Maku, Hausu, Ilya, Kiwi, JLab, JB, RPG, Joe Angelo, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Kiko Man 589, Laridge, Malaise, Mark Toms, Matthew Eversviller, Maz, Megadeth 859, Minung, Mechelin, Mitch LY, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Okla Kugels, Philip Mason, Portal 63, Rattlecat, Raul, Real Skeen, Shane Sintiansky, SLW, The Boot Rex, The Real Ikuzo, The Old Bensta, TRM, Zugumo, Plasmo, Twilight EX, and Utakaya. Thanks for watching.